Hello everybody and welcome to your second part of sprite animation. So let's get right into the code. So last time we were learning about using the game time class in order to manipulate frames per second so that the frame counter will increase at a steady rate and it won't increase super fast or super slow depending on the processing speed. So what is a frame counter going to do? The frame counter objective is just to count to a certain number and then when it reaches that certain number then we will actually change the frame so one thing that I want you guys to add right now which I forgot to add is uh, for the um, vector 2 up here at the top I want you to add um, a variable called current frame <coughs> sorry now we want to uh, create some properties for these and we're gonna do current frame and we're gonna do get and set properties. So we're gonna be getting sorry. Oh, I can't even type today. Sorry. We're gonna be getting the current frame, and we're gonna have sets getter and setter properties. And we're gonna be needing the. We might be needing the position. Uh, I might I might see if I'll go a different method but if not then we'll need the position and that is it for now so let us uh, before we when we got when we created our program we had we created frame counter and switch frame so the value of switch frame is a limit that we're gonna is gonna indicate to us when we should switch the frame. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put if frame counter is greater or equal to switch frame, that is gonna indicate to us that we actually indeed need to switch the frame. And don't worry, in our initialized method, we're gonna set the value for a switch frame. So if frame counter is greater or equal to switch frame, then we wanna reset frame counter back to zero again um that should be pretty straightforward and then what we want to do is that we want to transition to the different frames so we we're do we're going to do of uh, current frame dot x plus equals frame width and um as you notice that we don't have a frame width yet we don't have a frame width property so you might think I'm working a little bit backwards here, but I'm trying to get to the actual core of the program first. So we're gonna end up making properties called uh, frame width and frame heights, and they're just gonna be read only since we won't set the frames height. So we're gonna get the frame. How we're gonna get the frame width? is that we're going to get the actual images width divided by the amount of frames dot x now since vector properties are like floats and doubles we have to cast it to an integer same reason why we had to do we had to cast it to an integer over here because this returns a float or a double so that's basically how we're going to get the frame width and we're going to get the frame height the same way just switching that from height and getting the amount of frames dot y now uh, what is the frame width and the frame height like I specified in the first tutorial the frame width and the frame height is the width and height of the individual images not the full sprite sheet itself just the individual images so each Im individual image is 32 by 48 so if you go back to our code the image width is 128 and the amount of frames uh, should be set to 4 because there's 4 frames so 128 divided by 4 is equal to 32 same for the frame height the frame the image height is 192 pixels and the amount of frames should be 4 frames since there's 4 images 1 2 3 4 so 192 divided by 4 is equal to 48 so the frame height should return 48 and the frame width should return 32 so we want to cycle through the animations so first the current frame um, X and the current frame Y should be set to 0 or whichever direction is facing the current frame Y will be set to whichever direction they're facing or whatever so um, but the current frame X by default should be set to 0 
So then what it's saying is that current frame x plus equals frame width. So the current frame x will move 32 pixels to the right, and then it should draw this image right here. Then I'll move another 32 pixels, draw this next image, move another 32 pixels, draw this image, then it will reset back to the first animation and cycle through it until you stop pressing that direction. So uh, how we how we going to do this? How are we going to actually crop out the certain image that we want to draw? Well, we have to uh, create a rectangle, and this is going to be called source rect. So the source rectangle is basically going to crop out um, the images, the current image that we actually need to draw. So don't worry about the source rect right now. So we're basically saying that uh, the current frame dot x plus equals to plus equals frame width. So now we have to say that if current frame x is greater than or equal to the width of the image, then we reset current frame x back to zero again. So it's basically saying that if the current frame x is at this edge, there's nothing for it to draw. So we have to reset it to zero again, and then it will draw this image back again. So we'll cycle through these images. Sorry if I'm being repetitive, but I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible. So that's all that happens when frame counter is greater than or equal to switch frame. So now we need to use our source rect in order to actually crop out the image. And how we do this, we put source rect equals to new rectangle. Now you guys should generally already know what rectangles do. They draw a certain section of the picture. So we're only going to be cropping out certain sections. So th this, should, this is simple enough. We just put current frame x, current frame y, then we cast it to int because rectangles are um, require integer parameters, not doubles or floats. Then we put frame height and we should cast it. So cast frame height. Oh, sorry, I casted the wrong thing. Frame height, frame width, and frame height are already integers. Sorry, we're supposed to cast the current frame. So we cast the current frame to integers, and that should be it for our source rect. So what is what is this gonna do? So b pretend that we're pressing the down key, okay? We're pressing the down arrow key. Sorry. So that means um the the default the current frame x is equal to zero and current frame y is equal to zero, okay? So what this is gonna do? is that it's going to say start cropping from p pixel 0 in the x coordinate and pixel 0 in the y coordinate and in this x2 and y2 we end drawing from the frame width from 32 pixels towards the right and 32 pixels down so what this is going to do is going to say start drawing from this corner move 32 pixels to the right then move 30 if move 48 pixels down sorry so move 48 pixels down and then crop out that rectangle and store it in source rect. So basically that current image is stored inside source rect. So if we go to our draw um, method and we type in sprite badge draw, what we're going to do is we're going to draw our, our image and our image, um, first of all, you can see that sprite batch has many overloads so we're, we're not going to be using the first one or the second one we're going to be using the fourth one so it takes four parameters the texture position the source rectangle which means cropping out and the color which is going to be color dot white so we're going to type in position source rect color dot white so the draw command is pretty simple now one thing I should add and uh, this is, should be a very important thing that you should add is another boolean variable called active and we're gonna set this to false by default or we should probably do that in our initialize method so we're gonna set our uh, active equals to false so what is active gonna act as Active is going to say that if the player is active, then we actually want to actually draw the frame or increase the frame counter. If active is equal to, if active, if there's, ne if there's no active variable or something signifying it, 
then even when you're not moving the frame counter is still going to be added to so what we want to do is put if active then we increase the frame counter else then we reset frame counter equal to zero and then everything remains the same so uh, in our player class we're gonna end up changing the active based on if we're actually pressing a button and if we're not and in order to do that since this is a private variable we'll have to make a property so public bool and we'll name this active and we'll get active so return active and we'll set active so active equals to value so uh, let me check how much time I have right now okay so basically uh, just to re -run, re like rerun what we've done in this tutorial so we've created uh, some properties right here the frame width and frame height is the width and height of the individual images we get that by getting the total images width divided by the amount of actual frames or the amount of images we have so since this image is 128 pixels wide and we have four images then we do 128 divided by four and in, the, in turn we get that each image is 32 pixels wide just a little math for you to do there you could in fact the reason why we do it this way is because if you have different images in a game and you want to incorporate the different images or image widths and heights then uh, you can't just say that the frame width is 32 pixels or frame height is 48 pixels for every single image or your game won't be flexible or your game engine or whatever so in order to accommodate for different sprite sheet widths and heights then we do it this way for maximum flexibility and um, in later tutorials I'm going to be showing you how to actually load these values through text files and stuff so then it's easier instead of manually inputting the values like that all the time so uh, what we did in the update we say that if active is true so if the player is indeed moving then we increase the frame counter if the player is not moving we set the frame counter to zero if the frame counter has reached the frame limit to the point to switch the frame then we switch the current frame we set frame zero to zero frame counter to zero and if the current frame is too big or it's, it can't draw any frames anymore it resets back to the first frame image then for the source rect we actually crop out the image we want to draw and in the draw method then we actually draw our image our cropped out image towards the screen so that is it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye